It is highly ironic that the Biden administration would choose this particular time in history to gather together the Western democracies when almost all of those countries face serious crises, placing into question the effectiveness of their own form of governance. All of these nations are facing serious questions of trust by their population. Here in the United States, a large portion of the electorate is even convinced that the last presidential election was a total fraud. Never before have these nations faced such a crisis of confidence among their own people. While the COVID epidemic and the measures required uh, to deal with it have aggravated the situation, that crisis has been brewing for a very long time. The fundamental problem is that the political elites controlling the governments of these Western democracies have largely distanced themselves from the needs of the people. Growing disparity between rich and poor, continued racial discrimination, the neglect uh, of the great pockets of poverty in the inner cities and in the countryside have led to the sense among a large part of the population that government has completely forgotten them. The great mass of people that violently broke into the US Congress on January 6th was simply a reflection of the mood throughout the nation. But the real objective of this upcoming gathering is to rally the forces of the Western Alliance, the NATO countries and their satraps to follow them in a show of force in opposition to Russia and China, whom they have labeled autocracies. And yet both these countries are democracies, each with their own particular brand of democracy, which is largely determined by different historical and cultural circumstances than those in the West. China in particular has proven to have developed a particularly effective system of governance, one in which people in the grassroots have the ability to raise issues, which if important, can then be taken into the legislative discussion through their representatives uh, on the various People's Congress and even perhaps lead to legislation in the NPC or the CPPCC. And much of this, of course, will be improved with the new whole process, People's Democracy, proposed by Xi Jinping. The workings of this particular system of governance has pulled over 800 million people out of poverty and helped to raise the nation to a position of moderate prosperity. While the ruling Communist Party is directly focused on meeting the changing needs of the Chinese population, most Western parties, such as here in the United States, are more interested in meeting the needs of the corporations and the moneyed interests, including the military industrial complex, who have helped finance the campaigns that brought them into power. If an independent were elected, who really wanted to do some good for the people, but who opposed some of the prerogatives of the powers that be, that person would soon be branded, slandered, and thrown into jail on trumped up charges or worse. And I have friends who have personal experience in this respect. That's not how the system was intended to operate by the founding fathers, but it is largely the way it now works with the growing powers of the financial and banking oligarchy. Whether a particular form of governance or democracy is good or bad has got to be decided on the sole criteria of the benefit it has provided for the common man. Were we to use those criteria, we would surely find that the popular support engendered by the policies of the Communist Party of China is far greater uh, than the support engendered for either of our political parties or for both of them together. But no one dares make that comparison, uh, since the policy coming out of Washington today has little to do with democracy versus autocracy, but is rather a raw political attempt to assert the continued domination of the ruling financial oligarchy centered in the ba major banks of London and New York and backed up by the military alliance of the United States. Any attempt by developing countries like China to call for a new just world order that is equitable and inclusive will be deemed by them to be a threat to their system and they will do whatever they can to prevent such from taking shape. And they foolishly believe that the rest of the world or at least a large part of it will support them in that endeavor. 
But given the record of these Western democracies in places like Africa and Latin America, as opposed to the record of China, it is doubtful that this so-called alliance of democracies will become a rallying cry for any but those totally wedded to this failed system or blackmailed by economic and military pressure from Washington to follow their lead. For most of the world, particularly in Africa and in the developing world, the record of China is already very clear and the countries there and elsewhere are only waiting for the smoke from this obvious diversion to settle in order to continue along the path of development on which they have embarked uh, upon together with the People's Republic of China. Thank you for listening.